All right, today we are diving into Model Context Protocol or MCP. It's a new standard that's being talked about as a revolutionary way for AI systems to fetch context from different sources. It's being called the USB-C of AI, that is a universal connector that lets AI system plug into GitHub databases, internal tools, etc. and pull relevant context on demand. Hello everyone, welcome back to Logical Lenses. In this video, we are going to break down what MCP is, what problem is it solving and do we actually need it? Because the more I dig into this, the more I feel like we might be solving a problem that barely exists or at least not in a way that justifies adding an entire protocol, a whole new layer of abstraction, a network call, a server and a scaling headache. So let's get started. Okay. Let's first understand what MCP actually is and what problem it's solving. Think of how AI assistants like ChatGPT or Claude work. If you ask them something like, hey, how do I deploy this code? They don't have access to your GitHub, your database, your document, nothing. Right now, if you want AI to fetch real-time context from a project, every AI tool has to implement its own way. Some call APIs, some queries database, some rely on vector search. It's all custom scattered and messy. MCP comes in and says, let's standardize this. Instead of each AI assistant having to build its own pipeline, MCP provides a universal way to request and fetch relevant context. It's got this client server architecture where AI apps talk to an MCP client, MCP client sends the request to an MCP server MCP server fetches data from wherever, GitHub, Postgres, APIs, etc. And then structured response is sent back to the AI model. Basically, instead of a dozen scattered approaches, MCP gives you one standard way to handle context for AI. Okay, let's take a step back. Why do we even need MCP? What's actually broken in the current way AI fetches data? Right now, if you are building an AI chatbot, it might need to pull customer data from Postgres, project updates from GitHub, internal wiki pages, etc. Now without MCP, you just write a simple function for each of these. You query the database, call an API or fetch from a file. Done. With MCP, now you're introducing an entire inter-service architecture just to avoid writing those few function calls. And this is where I start having real doubts. If I want my AI to fetch customer data from Postgres, I can literally do this in 15 lines of code. It's that simple. But MCP says, no, let's not do that. Let's introduce a server, a network call and a middle layer just to fetch the same data in a standardized way. Instead of that simple function call, now the request goes from AI app to MCP client, then to MCP server, then to Postgres, back to MCP client, and then finally back to AI app. Why? What are we actually gaining here? Sure, standardization is nice, but is it worth turning a local function into a full-blown networked microservice just for the sake of standardization? And then there's the single point of failure problem. If my AI app depends on MCP for context and MCP goes down, every AI assistant relying on it breaks. So I'm sitting here thinking, this feels like over-engineering. But let's be fair, there are some real scenarios where MCP actually makes sense. Let's say you are a massive company having thousands of AI agents running around and fetching data from different sources. In that case, you probably don't want each team re-implementing the same context fetching logic over and over. With MCP, everything is centralized. One place to enforce security policies, governance and access control. For example, you can say this AI agent can fetch customer data but not employee records. Only authorized users can query certain data sets. And also all AI models get the same structured response format so switching between OpenAI, Claude and Mistral is seamless. That's the real value of MCP. Governance and standardization at scale. But here's where things get tricky again. Even in that enterprise scenario, you still have to write your own mapping logic. Even with MCP, you still have to define what data to fetch, how to transform it and how to structure it before sending it to the AI model. 
So if I'm already doing all that work, what is MCP actually saving me? It feels like we are just moving the complexity elsewhere. Okay, let's talk system design now. Because this is where things get really interesting or maybe a bit questionable. If you sit down and sketch out how MCP actually works in an architecture diagram, you'll quickly realize you're basically adding a whole new distributed service layer. You now have the AI application like your assistant or agent, the MCP client running locally or within the app, the MCP server running somewhere on your infra, and then your actual data sources like GitHub, Postgres, etc. So instead of your AI agent calling an internal API or DB directly, it's now making a request to the MCP client which forwards it to the server which then fetches the data, structures it and sends it back. That's three components just to fetch context. Now extend that flow a little further and this is what it actually looks like. The AI apps calls the MCP client, which calls the MCP server, then the data source, and then finally back to the MCP server, back to the client and back to AI app. All this just to replace a local function call. That's seven hops instead of one. Not only does this introduce latency, but it adds operational overhead. You need to host the MCP server, scale it, secure it, monitor it. And if something goes wrong, guess what? Now you're debugging a distributed system instead of a local bug. And that MCP server, it's now a shared dependency across all your AI apps. So it introduces single point of failure. Now you can say, okay, let's add load balancers and caching on top of it. Sure. You can deploy replicas, use Kubernetes and all those fancy things. But why are we engineering complexity just to avoid writing 15 lines of code? And if you are already using an API gateway in your system, which most people are, you can achieve 80% of what MCP promises just by exposing clean APIs and calling them with a shared library. You don't need to invent a whole new protocol for that. What about governance? API gateways already support fine-grained access control, role-based routing, throttling, etc. Monitoring and logging, API gateways already track request metrics, failures, latencies, all in one place. Not only this, it also provides security. They handle TLS, rate limits, and even JWT validation out of the box. So unless you are doing something wildly different, you are reinventing what already exists in most backend stacks. That's why from a system design perspective, MCP feels like it introduces more moving parts than it actually eliminates. And one more thing, isn't Langchain and other similar frameworks already supposed to solve this problem? They abstract away data sources, handle retrieval, formatting, tool integration, basically the whole pipeline of bringing context to LLMs. So why not just build on top of something like that? What's the point of adding MCP into the mix if you're already using Langchain or Llama Index or whatever else to do the same thing? At that point, you're not even adding anything revolutionary. You're just renaming what already exists and wrapping it in a new buzzword. So what's the takeaway here? If you are a solo developer or even a small team building a few API apps, you probably don't need MCP. A shared library, clean APIs, and your existing infra will get the job done. If you are running a massive organization with hundreds or thousands of AI agents, sure, standardization and centralized governance might make MCP worth considering. But even then, maybe your existing API gateway already gives you most of what you need. So just pause and ask, are you solving a real problem or just adding complexity for the sake of it. Anyway, that's what I think. And I'm also learning and figuring all this out as I go. So if you have a different take, I would like to hear it. Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this useful, please consider subscribing. More deep dives are coming soon. This is Logical Lenses. See you in the next one.